<laughs> Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook. Hey everyone, you're watching Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook and today I've got an adventure for you. I'm gonna go on a solo overnight camping mission with the ultralight and we're gonna try and make a either fish or crab curry with what we, what we can find on the beach. We're starting this mission from my friend Ian's property, Ian and Julie. They live not far from the coast and we're gonna fly over to the coast and I think the first thing we'll do is we'll set up camp. But for dinner, all I'm taking is what's in these three containers. So everything else I have to find, forage, catch, and yeah, get. <laughs> I'll just show you quickly what I've got in the trike. I've got one saddle bag tied on here. I'll just put that in there. Got a fishing rod. Um, all the other gear I'll show you as we go along. So it's tied on in two places. I've got my fuel tank. I've got five litres of water. That should be enough. And then on the other side, we've got my little pouch that I built. I've got some crab pots in there. Some little tiny hooks to maybe catch some live bait. Uh, big hooks for live baiting. And a little surprise for me and for you guys as well. It's a little windy already, so hopefully the takeoff won't be too bad. Once we get over the coast, it should be pretty uh, smooth flying. Got that round the right Just way. Just about to take off, and this bird has gone and got himself stuck inside my car. Come on, little bird. There you go. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Hey? Oh. I think he's like a little honey eater. Hey? Off you fly. Fly, be free. <laughs> okay, let's go again. And for those of you that watch my videos every week, you'll notice that we're not on the sailing boat anymore. I'll explain that later in the, at the campfire tonight. Let's get this party started.
nice landing. I actually chose a different creek to land. That other one had too much algae in it and it was pretty small. So I've chosen this spot. There's a couple of coconut trees over there which we'll need for our dinner, hopefully. And yeah, it looks nice for, for a fish in there later on and maybe some crabs tonight. The wind's actually a little stronger today than forecast, so I've just pulled the glider in here. It's a um, Casuarina Grove, so it's out of the wind a little bit. And I've just noticed the tide's ripping in, so I think the first thing we're going to do is find some bait. I didn't bring any, so we have to go find something. Shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> we'll just go down to the river. Okay, guys, let's have a look at this river. It actually looks like it's cranking quite hard. Oh, the, the current's really ripping in. Now, where am I going to find my bait? I reckon there'll be some either crabs or snails on the mangroves here. Oh, here we go. We've got one there. That's a snail. What else? Oh, here we go. Look at this. There's two snails right there. Grab both of those. Oh, another one. Oh, and we've got a friend, Mr. White-bellied or white-breasted sea eagle. There he is. I wonder if we'll get a better look at him later on. Eh? I'm actually quite surprised. I thought all the snails would be down low, but it turns out they're actually quite high. Like, that's, well, that's chest height there for me. There's another one, another one. So my guess is, yeah, the tide is coming up right up to here because these guys will probably want to be... Oh, I just heard a fish there. These guys will want to be out of the, the water. So they're feeding up high high on the mango. Always uh, like to notice these things and it might serve you well later on. We've probably got eight or nine, maybe ten little snails. So they should serve us well for bait. And uh, yeah, next challenge is to catch a small live bait fish. Something I can use as light. Okay guys, I've just had an eye opener. That's my footprint. And that there is a crocodile claw. One, two, three. And that's his tail. I don't know if you can see. Very hard to see. You can see his actual scoots on his tail there. And he slid around here. Did some sun baking. And actually that's very fresh. This, he's only just left here. So he's probably two and a half meters long. So I think I'm gonna put my camp right up in the trees because this, I've just walked here <laughs> and he was lying right where I'm standing. So there is a resident crocodile here. Just got to keep that in mind. I will be fishing at night tonight. So yeah, gotta watch out. Because there is a resident crocodile here, I'm gonna go into the bush here a little bit and um, see if there's a good spot where I can set up my hammock. I want to do that before I do much else. Get settled in. Actually, these two trees look pretty good. Yeah, that one's strong. Yeah. Need them about five meters apart. That one's a little floppy, but yeah, I'm about oh, 100, 100 odd meters from, from where I saw that crocodile slide. He's, He's over that way. You can actually see a bit of sand through there as well. Keep myself nice and high off the ground and um, hopefully he won't bother me. Quite nice as far as camping spots go. These two trees is, is my spot here. Just wanted to show you guys what's in my bag. This is the, um, the camping sort of bag. I've got the fly for my hammock. I've got a little pillow. Got a little ground mat. So that, that weighs about 300 grams. That weighs 250. That about 300. I've got a sleeping bag, which I really doubt I'll need. Um, it weighs around about a kilo. And then I've got my hammock itself, which is probably another kilo and a half. I think two fishing rods I brought. There we go. That's it. That's all that's in there. Except for a hip torch. There you go. <laughs> That height's much better. The first height, crocodile food.
won't worry about the fly tonight because there's no rain forecast and it doesn't look like there's going to be any rain. I will put the sleeping bag in, but I probably won't use it either. It's, um, yeah, as you can see, I'm quite warm already. So let's go for a bit of a forage. I reckon there's two ingredients I can find straight away. I, um, I saw the coconut trees as we were flying in, so we'll go and, go and see if we can find some coconuts. And then we'll find some greens. Greens are pretty easy to find out here, if you know what to look for. And there we have our first coconut tree. Where is he? Right in there. Let's see if there's any nuts on the ground that we can harvest. I don't care if they're a little bit brown or very brown, as long as there's a bit of meat in there. I need it. Hey, well there's definitely no shortage of coconuts on the ground. You can see them all in there. That's more coconuts here. And have a look at this. This one's even sprouted. That's a, a baby coconut tree. He hasn't, he hasn't gone into the ground yet. So you could take that home and put it into a pot, although, yeah, he'd grow pretty big pretty quick. Nothing in that one. So there's a selection of different coconuts up there. We've got the, um, the green ones over here. They'd be really good for juice and drinking. And the ones I really want is that sort of darker brown one right there. But I'm not going to climb up there at the moment. Okay, let's have a look. There's one over here that looks pretty good. That's got a little bit of milk in it. And this one here. Yeah. Yep. So we'll take these two. Ooh, coconuts. And um, yeah, see what we can get out of them. I got three, I couldn't help myself. Two should be enough, but having a spare never can go wrong. Let's uh, rig up the fishing reels and uh, yeah, go for a fish. So now I'll show you what's in this bag. They're the only two bags I've brought, well, other than the bags in the bags. So we've got my camera gear, we've got some cooking pots, Toilet paper, two fishing reels, my lip grippers and file, and cutters, cutter. And I've got some leader, two different types. In this little bag, I've got some small hooks and some bit bigger hooks for live bait fishing. There's my cutting board and the tackle club box. This is a little surprise. I haven't opened this yet, so we'll get to see what's in that and uh, maybe use it later on, but I'm going to try for live bait first. And then we've got four little crab dillies, so I'll need to catch a fish to use those. So this is going to be a bit like a food chain challenge. I've got the snails from before, I've just put them in a little plastic baggie. We're going to catch a small fish with the snails, then a bigger fish, and then put the fish in here, as well as maybe eat it, and then hopefully catch a crab. Probably breakfast crab, fingers crossed. I'm not good with crabs at the moment but that's the plan food chain challenge whilst flying to a remote location and camping out there was a couple of items in the bottom of the bag I um, I just got out I've got a, my knife as well some Gatorade uh, powder a file which will come in handy in a second and my little snow peak knife knife and fork spoon set but first I'm gonna make a little drink um, I do like a bit of Gatorade get some um, a bit of sugar and salt back into my body. You, um, I, I tend to get a little bit dehydrated out here, so you've got to got to keep the fluids up. Oh, that's good. So I love this little trike. It's a one seater, and it doesn't go very fast, so I can't do too many adventures in it. I wish I could. Um, I'm actually on the in the the search market. I'm looking for a two-seat trike. So if anyone out there knows someone who has one that doesn't use it anymore, yeah, I'm interested. 
leave a comment down below. And if you want to see more of these videos, leave a comment down below. Um, I read all comments, I still reply to every comment, um, and they inspire me to make more videos. And I've had a few great suggestions from people. I really enjoy the comments and the feedback. Both of the rigs I'm using is just a simple running sinker with a hook on it. One's a 3.0, the other one's like a size 4, I think. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm, I'll do to start with. It's really nice to rig up here in the shade under these trees. Let's see if our friend the crocodile's back here. They're very wary. If he sees us, he'll just take off. And you might notice my um, tackle box is a little aluminium pot. So just trying to minimize all the weight I have when I'm flying to these spots. And it doesn't look like he's here. I've just sat down here next to the river, very close to the water, but Oh, that was a fish. I'm um, very close to the water here, but I've got a mangrove in front of me. So even if a croc does come and sneak up on me, I've got time to get away. Um, so we got the snail. I've got my little pair of pliers, and we're just going to crush the shell. Oh, that's actually really soft. And put him on the hook. Now, yeah, the challenge is just to catch the smallest fish possible on that setup. I don't want a big fish here. Should do it. Set the drag and we'll just wait. Just keeping a little bit of tension on that line so that if something got taps on the end, I'll feel it. And also the sinker is a running sinker. So the sinker is not tied to the line, the line's just going straight through the sinker. And that way if anything grabs the other end and swims off with it, I'll be able to feel it. I'll give this spot about 10 minutes. And if we don't get anything, we'll try a slightly different spot. Oh, there was something on the surface there. Just after I cast in. Well, it's been a little while. I'm still on my first bit of bait. So we might change location. There's no point fishing where the fish aren't. Let's go this way. Here's a little dead mangrove, try right in front of that. The idea is that the current will take the scent into where the fish are hiding. Fish I'm definitely getting bites there. Oh, he's not getting it. He's a very small fish, but that's, that's exactly what I want. Yeah, there's only a little bit left. Let's put some more on. That was definitely a little bite. Oh, I struck too early. Oh, but this is on. This is on. I just lost all my bait then. Have yeah, a look at that. All gone. We're gonna get one here, I reckon. Oh, bites again straight away. They're, they're definitely switched on now. I oh, missed him again. Let's try this little spot here. It's like a little, tiny little inlet. Could be little fish moving through here. Yep, got one. Oh, what is it? I don't know. Could be a whiting? Yeah, it's a whiting. Let's have a look. Ah, there we go. Oh, he's a nice size whiting. He's, I reckon he's legal. That's going to be a big live bait. Wow. Okay. Yeah, he's 20, 28 centimeters. Oh, almost, almost lost him. So what we'll do is rig, we'll rig him up carefully. And if we have to later on, we can still eat him. When something eats this guy, he's got to get that whole fish into his mouth okay oh this is interesting we'll stay here a little longer there we go yep he's good now this is the first time I've used this reel for this purpose there you go there's one one drag there and if I flick that up it's a much harder drag so it's called a bait runner system Yep, he's still alive. Set that in here. And I'm using my pants as a rod holder. Going in so, like that. There we go. Oh, what's going on there? Something's going on. Just give it some more slack. That could be the whiting pulling that. 
hasn't taken off hard yet. It's just little tappies, tappy, tappy, tappy. I am now fishing off a little sandbank with two rods out. <laughs> I don't do that very often, but having the live bait, it's going to take a while for something to grab, I reckon. No, it's actually quite, quite peaceful just sitting here on the sand. I am keeping a good eye out in front of me. I can, I can just see in the water if, if a crocodile comes up within about a half a foot or a foot of the surface, I'll see him and I'll be out of here like a flash. Uh, they're definitely in here. We, we saw that slide before. So, interesting fishing. Nibbles. Yep, got something. What have we got? Oh, very small. I think it's another whiting. This one is undersized. Yep, that one is definitely undersized. I'm actually getting a little bit bored sitting here. That big line hasn't gone off. Um, and these guys are few and far between. Yeah, he's probably only just 24 centimeters. Okay, so what we might do, we'll let this guy go first. There he goes. And uh, we'll go and have a look. And see what's in the Tackle Club box. There's a um, nice sandbank along here, which I think I should be able to catch a flathead on. It's the Saltwater Estuary Pack. I don't know what month. I've been away for six, seven weeks. Um, but yeah, I reckon we'll be able to catch a flathead along there. There we go. He's still on there. So what I might do is we'll put him in the little shallow bit here. Keep him alive. And go and go and see what's in this tackle club box. There shouldn't be any big fish in here to eat him, and he's not going to go too far. So we'll put that here. Now on the way back to camp, we'll get some greens. This stuff is called pigweed or pig face, and we'll get a bunch of that. That's our greens. There's a lot of it here. It just covers the ground. Won't take it all from one spot. We'll get a few different spots, but it's um, it's uh, yeah, basically the native Australian equivalent of green beans. That should do us. Okay, let's have a look what I brought with me. I haven't opened this yet, so I'll be surprised. It's the saltwater estuary pack from May, so I'm a fair bit behind. Anyway, that's what's in it. We've got little jack, looks like yabby type things. They look pretty, really cool, very lifelike. We've got some Chase Baits uh, Krusty Crab. They look really good. And we've got some Jig Heads. They're by Berkeley Owner Hooks. Nitro, 3.0 quarter ounce. And some Boom Baits. There we go. Oh, hang on. Wait for it. A Storm Kick Shad. I reckon any of these lures will catch a flathead on that. I won't use them. They're good for the mangroves. They're a little small, um, they will still catch fish, but the water's a bit dirty. So it's these two here. So and in these um, Tackle Club boxes, this one subscription cost is $50. You get a value of $75.45. If you have a look in the link in my description, you get a special code and you get um, extra bonuses off at the start. So what we'll do is we'll take those and go catch a flathead. I'm 100% confident we'll get something. Chosen to go with the Samaki Boombait 4 inch bomb shad in like a, what is it called? White bait UV. Now, the main reason I'm going for these is because there's many of them, and if I lose one and they happen to be the bomb, um, yeah, it's not the only one I've got. So, how many casts do you guys think it will take me to catch a flathead? I reckon maybe seven. Okay, everyone, have you guessed now? Okay, here he goes. First cast. Oh, I just spooked one. Right there, where the bubbles are. Oh. That's no good. <laughs> that could have been my dinner. Around. There we go. That's now cast number two now. I'm not going to show you all the casts. But I definitely will count them all. Oh, okay, cast six, other side of the drain. We've got one more cast, and then that's my limit. That's six. Okay, here's number seven. Oh, 
Oh, and I just spooked another one right there. Damn it. I'm moving too fast. That's that's the that's why I'm spooking them. I've got to fish more and walk less. This is cast number 20. I'm getting a big lot of lot of casts now. Oh, oh, that might have been a hit. Didn't didn't hold on to him. I'm going to try that cast again. So that's 20. Yep, that was a hit. See that? He grabbed tail grabbed it. So that was on cast 20. Let's see if we can get him on 21. Cast 55! Cast number 61. I think if this one doesn't work, we'll go back to where we started. There's um, been not much in this really shallow. It's um, very shallow all the way back. So they, they like a bit more of a drop off. That's a lot of casts so far with no fish. Got him, yes. Cast 69, a small flathead. <laughs> oh, I've been missing quite a few because I think they are just this small. He is definitely undersized. Have a little look at him. Cast 69, there you go. That's a lot of cast. Hey, if you go, little buddy. There he goes. Whew. Wow, I did miss quite a few. They were always tail grabbing it and pulling the plastic off. That might have been a touch. Ah, it's a leaf. Alright, let's put the storm on and see how long it takes it to catch a fish. I'm going to say it'll be a lot quicker because the water's a bit dirty. And yeah, this, this one's not that visible. Plus they're tail grabbing it a lot. So the storm kick shad will have a few advantages over those soft plastics in that situation because one it's got rattles and two it's very flashy it's got gold green and orange on it whereas the other one was kind of the same color as the water so we'll do that same walk again and i'm going to say definitely not seven because that didn't work last time but it definitely won't be seven t so we'll give this one a little run and uh, yeah we're gonna have to catch a fish soon because the sun's going down We've got the whiting, but I want a little bit more. Everyone, what are your guesses for the storm kick shad? I'm going to say 20 this time. I'm not going to be as cocky as seven. But, um, it was a very low number before. That's cast number one. Just bumping the bottom there, which is good. Perfect. Okay, it's behaving good. Let's go down this way. Cast number two. Cast 13, and I just spooked a nice big flathead right there at foam. Ah, was that the last time on 13 as well? I don't know. Damn it, it's too shallow. Cast 16. Cast 16, we got one. Oh, and he could be dinner too. He's splashing around a bit. Oh, yes. Cast 16, I was just watching this bird. He, he came over this way, I had a stick in his mouth, and he's, he's gone in that tree there. Let's get this guy in. I reckon he's dinner. Ah, here we go, he's definitely over 40. Yeah, he is just under 50. That is our dinner. We'll get a nice little glamour shot of this guy, seeing as we're going to eat him. This is a mud flathead or dusky flathead. Their uh, legal size is between 40 and 75 centimetres, I believe. they got really pretty eyes. Oh, and he just slapped me in the face. He slapped me. <laughs> oh, that's all right. cut the fillets off him and we'll use the head and body as crab pot paint. I almost forgot, I still have to open the coconut and uh, yeah, prepare the pigweed. I need a stick for that, we'll go find one over here. 
to prepare the pigweed, just make sure it's got no, no sand on it. And then all you do is you pull off all the little leaves. And we'll do that for the, the whole bunch here. That's actually quite a bit of green, which will be good for me. There we go. That's, um, yeah, plenty of greens for me, a little handful. Let's uh, find a stick for the coconut. Oh, here we go. Straight away. Let's see. Yeah, that's pointy enough. Okay, I'll have to bury that in the sand. Just burying that stick into the ground a little bit, and that will give me, hopefully, some leverage. Or leverage. There we go. There we go. Nice and easy. There we have a coconut out in less than a minute, I reckon. There we go. One nut. That'll be good, perfect. I'm doing do one more. Can you see the amazing backdrop behind me? Got big sand flats, nice blue water, big mountains. Anyway, I'm just gonna enjoy the milk. I'm not gonna cook with the milk, I'm just gonna drink the milk. Cheers, everybody! Oh, that is so sweet. That's the best coconut I've had in ages. The curry's gonna be exceptional later. And I better get a move on because the sun's going down. Mm. That is so sweet. So this piece of wood's actually quite hard and it should be able to crack this nut open. Oh look at that, first hit. How easy is that? Now the fire's roaring, we're going to burn it down to coals. I'll show you step two in making your own coconut milk. So step one is obviously break it open and drink the milk. But the coconut cream and the milk you buy in the shops is usually made from this white part here. There we go. We'll start off with that piece. And that's why I've got my little grater. All we're going to do is grate it into this bowl. Now it's going to take a while so I won't bore you with it, but I'll do at least one whole coconut. And there we go, that's pretty much the whole coconut in there. Okay, and then what we're going to do is throw some water in there and let it sit for a little while. And we'll just let that sit for a little while, let it get right into all those little shavings. I'm almost ready to show you what's in these, but not yet. So first, we're gonna take the fillets off the flathead. And it's pretty simple. We'll just cut right down by the spine. Right up behind the back of the head. And then just go over the top of the rib cage. There we go. And we've got our two fillets. I'm quite happy to leave a little bit on that because I'm going to use it for crab pot bait. I'll take the skin off, nice and easy. And like all fish, they've got the pins, the pin bones here. I'll just go down there and cut them out. So that's now boneless and we'll just cut it into bite-sized chunks. Won't make them too big because we want this to cook really quite fast because we're running out of daylight again. So it seems I had a bit of a camera malfunction. I did show you what was in these, but the camera didn't record it. So this one I had some spices, uh, turmeric, 
coriander, cumin, uh, a couple of others, mustard seeds, and yeah, something else. And in this one, I had butter, garlic, and onion, all chopped up, ready to go. And the third and final step to making coconut cream from scratch is to drain the coconut. Just put it into my little bag. This this um, whoops, this little bag is what these bowls come in. So yeah, it comes in pretty handy. Get this in here, and then all you do is lift it up and squeeze it out. There we go. Look at that. That is the freshest coconut milk and cream you're ever going to have. There we go. Beautiful. Why do I always cook so late? This is, um, this is sizzling a little bit. I've just got it on the lowest heat possible. <laughs> lowest heat means one little burning branch. Just to get the, the spices to release their flavours and combine with the, um, the onion and the butter. Uh, but yeah, what a pretty little spot. Those spices have been going maybe four or five minutes and I'm just going to put in half the coconut milk. Oh, there we go. It's gone yellow straight away. That's really cool. There we go. That's about half. Get that up to a simmer. Okay, it's been a few minutes. It's gone past the simmer. It's pretty much a hard boil, but we're just going to drop the flathead in there. Give that a little, little bit of a stir. And leave that for about another three to four minutes. Okay, that's back up to the boil, and we're going to put in our greens, the old pig face. These are quite salty, so we won't need any salt in our dish. Give them a stir. And when those greens are cooked, the curry will be ready. Actually, you know what? I've still got to put the rest of the coconut milk in. Let's have a taste of this. Mmm, really good curry flavour. I just remembered what the other thing was, was that I put in there. It was cayenne pepper, <laughs> and I think I went a little bit hard on it. So I didn't have chilies at home, um, so I just put cayenne pepper in. It's got a little bite, probably about here. But yeah, it's not too bad. It's, it's definitely bearable. So yeah, three or four minutes, and that'll be done. I am now ready to reveal what's in the red container. The curry's finished, and this is an accompaniment of couscous. If I can get it open with one hand. There we go, couscous. I chose couscous because it's the easiest thing to cook. All you do is heat up some water, um, probably one and a half times the water as couscous. Heat the water up, dump the couscous in, and wait three minutes, it's done. That's what the butter's for. Once the couscous has um, got a nice body to it, you chuck the butter in and give it a stir around. I won't show you that because yeah, it's getting really dark, but yeah, be ready in like three minutes. I'm just waiting for the couscous and look at the colour of that. That is just beautiful. Mm. While I wait for dinner to finish cooking, I'll give you the really quick version of why we came home early from the sailing trip. I had wanted to film from Percy's all the way up to here but the wind came up really strong 20 to 30 knots and then I also had some a letter from the council that said I needed to do some gardening work which um, they, I got the letter really quite late so I had to race home and, and do that sort of thing so we will definitely do more with the sailing boat it's um, yeah it's great as a home base Although I do want a little little tender that is not inflatable, so if I, if I go up creeks or a little bit out to the islands there, it's a little bit more seaworthy and can handle a bit of chop. To get. There we have the couscous ready in about three or four minutes, and the curry's looking really quite nice. <sighs> Fires crackling away, and I can hear a night jane behind us. There's also some orange-footed scrub fowl over that way somewhere. And doesn't this light make me look terrible? <laughs> I think I look like this when I'm 70 or 80. Ooh, that's terrible. Anyway, dinner's uh, going to be nice. So we definitely have plans to do more with the sailing boat, especially around 
around this area here. We're within reach of 100 islands. You're definitely going to see more of that. And if you haven't seen it, there's five or six, maybe seven episodes um, just before this one. So have a look at the, uh, the, the numbers or the, the thumbnails here. You can't click on this, but, but just search Andy's Fishing and then whatever the number is you see here. It was a pretty cool trip with uh, a couple of amazing spots. Anyway, I'm going to eat my dinner. It, um, it smells delicious and I've already tasted the sauce a little bit. I think there's a lot of, a lot of green on that one. No fish yet. Mm. Mm. Onion's still got a bit of crunch to it. Let's, um, let's find a nice bit of fish. There we go. Mm. It's all flaked apart really nicely. And it's... Um, that curry flavour is just, just delicious. Have a little bit of the couscous. Mm. So hang around. I'm going to see if I can spot a crocodile with a head torch. Um, there's definitely one in here. I've, I've seen him here a couple of times. Um, and then also I'm going to put the crab pots in, or crab dillies. Let's, um, let's try a couple of these. These pig face or pig... Uh, Pig, pig weed. Mm. As far as bush tucker goes, <clears throat> the pig weed you, you can't beat it. It's like like salty green beans. Mm. Oh, wow, that's that's good good food. And if it's not too windy in the morning, I'll have a fly around as well. Maybe have another little fish. Um, and hopefully we can have uh, either mud crab or sand crab for breakfast. That'd be cool. But this is good. And all from two or three of these little containers plus what I found here. That is, that is cool. The taste in this, you wouldn't expect any better at a restaurant. You might want to do rice instead of couscous. I don't mind. Rice, rice takes 20 minutes. This is three. So I'm quite happy with it. Anyway, I'm going to sit by the fire, eat my dinner, and then we'll play around in the dark a little bit. I've taken four dillies, but I'm only going to use three because I don't have enough bait. I'll um, put the, white, the front of the whiting in one. I'm keeping the other half of the whiting for strip bait. I've just cut it into two little fillets. So if the mosquitoes aren't too bad down at the creek, I will have a fish. Got the flathead head in the next one. And the flathead tail in the last one. It's a little bit big, but it'll work. Zip ties are really easy just to zip them in there. Perfect, that works. Okay, let's walk down to the river. I'm a little apprehensive because that was definitely a crocodile slide before, and I know that one lives in here. I might just change my um, spotlight. There we go. Now I can see ahead of me see what's going on the good thing is you um, you generally see a crocodile's eye at night um, from a fair way off so that's what I'm going to try and spot I don't see one up here behind me I haven't seen one in the water but that doesn't mean they're not there anyway let's not spend too much time here we'll just chuck the first one in we'll try and space them out as much as possible um, it's going to be a little bit hard because we're not in a boat, we're just doing it off the land. First one's in. Tie him to the tree. There's actually quite a few bugs here and the, yeah, the mud's not too bad, but I don't want to get stuck in here, so I'll throw it from here and tie it to the tree. Pot number two. There we go. Bugs. The bugs are terrible. Okay, pot number three. Oh, that's as close as I'm going to get to the water. There we go. 
back to the campfire. The crab dillies are in the water. Uh, we're going to leave them for probably 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, it's enough time for a crab to find it, but not enough time for him to eat all the food and nick off. Uh, the tide's actually going out, so all the smell is going the wrong way. First thing in the morning, it will have gone the right way for about an hour. So, yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay, it's been well over an hour. I've left the dillies in the water. The tide seems to have stopped running. I can't see any crocodiles. So we'll get the first one and see if there's anything in it. And we have absolutely nothing. That's the, um, the flathead body part. Okay, let's throw it back out. Okay, next one. Oh, I stuck on a stick. Ah, oh, okay, that one's now useless. Okay, I'll leave that one out. So now we've only got two in the water. And... No, nothing in that one too. So yeah, at the moment, the tide's actually going the wrong way. There's one thing left to do tonight, and that's to brush my teeth. I um, put a bit of toothpaste on the toothbrush and put it in some cling wrap. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the morning. So the forecast was for no rain. It didn't look like rain and it's raining. I don't know if you can tell, but it's all wet all down the sides already. I'm wet sleeping bag's wet so anyway we'll see how bad it gets I'm going back to bed ok that first lot of rain was at 11 o'clock at night this second lot of rain has been from midnight till 1 in the morning and it's dripping everywhere it's just I've got a puddle under my back it's dripping under my leg ah <sighs> Not a very good night. Good morning, everyone. Oh, that rain started about 11 o'clock last night. Finished for a little while, and then about, I think, midnight it started again and didn't stop till close to 2 in the morning. So I had a pretty rough night. It's not the worst night I've ever had, but, yeah. It's not, it's not the best either. So there's a lot of mosquitoes in here and out there. Sleeping bag saturated, the hammock's all wet. The glider will be, yeah, really wet. Um, I think what I'll do is make a fire and then go get those crab pots or dillies. It's, um, yeah, a lot of fog out there at the moment, I think. Um, Everything's wet, so hopefully we can make a fire. You can see there's a little bit of dry material underneath the hammock here. There's not a lot, but that could get us started. Let's have a look. Oh, you know what? There's still a bit of heat in there. That's the easiest way to start a fire. If I can get these coals up. There we go. Fire! It feels good to have the fire going again. It's um, a little bit of heat and it'll keep the mosquitoes away and hopefully we can get a crab. Still about half an hour before sunrise so yeah, it's a little cool and I'm still quite wet. I'm going to check the crab pots. I'm actually down to my third camera. The um, other GoPros that flat, flat it was 1% last night. The zoom camera started flashing red this morning, so this is the last camera. Let's hope it lasts for what it needs. 
Once again, just looking out for Mr. Crocodile. A lot harder to see during the day um, because you, know, you don't see the eye shine. Just grabbed a stick in case I do get something. Next thing, oh no. Let's, um, let's get these pots out of the water. Oh, it could feel like something in there. Ah, it's just a bit of mud. Ah, and it really hasn't been touched from last night. Okay. That's a mud skipper taking a cross over there. And I don't think we've got anything in this one either. Nope. And to be honest, they haven't been touched. That bait has not been chewed on. The sun's up now. I've grabbed the big rod. I've put the um, storm lure on there. And as you can see, the water's dripping off my trike. So I won't be able to go anywhere until this is dry. Which gives me a chance to see if I can catch a barramundi or mangrove jack in the river here. Um, yesterday the tide was a bit high, but today it's quite low and I'll be able to reach the, the snags on the other side, so that's this morning's mission. Hopefully the camera doesn't run out of battery. I've got my little tackle box with me <laughs> and a few extra lures as well, plus some leader and cutters. So let's see what we can... We'll start up here again and work our way down the, the mouth a little bit, I think. Let's see if we can get it near those snags on the other side there. Oh, that's pretty close. That's about a metre away. There's a bit of a snag on the other side there. Let's see if we can reach it. Oh! It's like one foot from it. Oh, and that was a hit. That was a hit. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That's about a 30, well, pretty close to 40 metre cast. That's pretty cool. Look at this. Flathead, 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 flathead. Not sure. Flathead. Two flathead. Another flathead, another flathead. Tiny one, tiny one. And yeah, that was probably at uh, two in the morning. Looking at where the rain is and where the tide went down. Hmm. Interesting. Like so many things, I don't recommend you do this. I'm walking out. And there's a cat, there's a um, whiptail ray. Now once I can't see out like three, four meters in front of me, that's when I back up a little bit. And we'll have a cast on this other side. That actually looks really good. Bit of a washout and some exposed roots. Just got to be careful, I get stuck there. And that's time to stop fishing. Oh, yeah, got one. Oh, what is it? Oh, I don't know, it's staying down. Got a bit of weight in it. Oh, looks like a barramundi. Oh, quick, before the camera runs out of battery. Oh, it's dragging up. Yep, it's definitely barramundi. Come on up, buddy. Ah, oh, look at that. Last minute of the filming. Camera is 1%. There we go. Barramundi in the morning. Ho oh, ho, nice chromey. Beautiful. I'd say he's just under size. Yeah, let's see. 50. There, yeah, he's about one or two centimeters under size, but that is very cool. Wow, okay, I'll let you go, buddy. And I literally have one percent left on the camera, hey? Off you go, buddy. Just see if he swims off. There he goes. Well, here he goes. <laughs> oh, that is cool. <sighs> Yeah, every time I start the camera, 1%, I've got to press the button so I can't film any flying back. Um, better get away from that water. So, yeah, it's been a great morning. Glad I got that fish. It <laughs> just whacked me. Anyway, um, I'll, I might film a little bit more with my iPhone, but, yeah, all my cameras are flat as. Whew. Wow. Cool. 
Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and people who've donated through PayPal. If you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.